Ladies, ladies, come on. I forgot my whistle, I know, but I need to get your attention. These late nights are just getting too much. I know, Carrie, I think it was you, maybe Donna. I heard a lot of ruckus going on last night. I think you guys are having way too much fun. So I am so glad you're here today at camp with us. Today's day number four of week one. I cannot believe it. And I have on my special camp uniform because we're talking, going to the Eiffel Tower. And um, that was one that I love to doodle. And maybe you already knew that. But I really love to doodle and paint. And so one of the first things I did after the whole Paris theme started to develop was to... Um, work on the Eiffel Tower. Now, I say I like to doodle because I'm not a great, perfect artist, but it's a lot of fun just to doodle and have fun with different colors. And so we're going to talk about some of that today. But in our camp journal, I just wanted to bring out, point out a little something. Number one, just be you. Beauty begins the moment you decide to be yourself. And that's what is all the fun, is when we can choose the colors we want to use or the flowers, or we can just do our own thing. Um, we can use the ideas we give you as inspiration, but and I can't wait to see what you created. But today, as I mentioned, we are going to the Eiffel Tower. So you've seen this one here. I just wanted to point out a few things. We are going to be doing um, some piecing, doing some little pennants. Of course, we have, um, sorry, I've taped those together, a coordinating envelope. But before we get started, I want to go through the supplies that you need with this kit. So we have our envelope wraps. This whole kit, we're using the black and white watercolors. I just think it's so cute and just coordinates with everything. Here is our envelope. And as we've talked about before, they are reversible. So this would be cute this way as well. And then the papers that we need for the pink card. Now I'll tell you, this was the first one I created. And I just really liked it. And then I thought, but boy, it looks like every other card I make because pink is my favorite color. And so I thought you should step outside of the box. And so... I tried a new color. Well, it's not really a new color, but a new color for me. And these are the supplies we're going to need for the seafoam card. So this one has more of a masculine feel too. So if you're looking for a card for that guy in your life. So we need our black happy birthday, our stripes, and of course our new fresh gesso seafoam. So, and then we've done a little inking, some outlining, so we're gonna go through some of those steps. And I think we're gonna build the seafoam card today. So let me clear the rest of this out of the way. Oh, one thing I wanted to show you on the inside. Look, just a few pieces really makes a difference. So, you know, I have to tell you, when I think about colors, and trying to think outside the box. Um, one of our first designers we hired, I asked her what her favorite color was. You know what she said? She said it was green. I'm not green. Green is not even a color. It's the background. It's like the leaves and the grass. It's not the co a color. I've been surprised. Green is a great color and really fun to work with. Then one day, she was working on a sample, and she combined two colors. Let me show you what they were. Sorry, I didn't grab this earlier. I think I can find it very quickly. I've got my art from collection right here. It could be that color. She combined these two colors. I thought those two colors don't go together. Oh my gosh, I love the combination now. So that's what we have to get used to is thinking about different combinations. Be brave and be bold and try new colors. So you can even see I've used those two colors in this paper here 
just because I like that combination. So color is a lot of fun, but we have to be bright. So let's get started. A couple of things I wanted to point out is the direction of the stripes. Now I could have chosen for them to go a different direction, but I thought to have them both going vertical. This paper here is vertical, this one being horizontal. I didn't know if I'd like the lines being horizontal going this way on the seafoam mini stripes. So when you're cutting, I just thought I would show you a little trick. If you cut the long ways of your paper, let's see, it's about an inch wide, that little piece. Now your stripes will be going horizontal around your card, like so. So I will often just cut a strip like that, then I'll fold it and cut it off on the back. You can have it go clear to the outside edge, or stop in the middle, have them staggered. However, so we have one ready to go. So that is a good secret to know about making a horizontal stripe vertical. This one is easy to just trim. And these sizes don't have to be perfect. You're just getting them in the neighborhood. Let's see if that was close. That was pretty close. Could have been a little thicker. I'll measure that for you so you have a better idea at home. One and one sixteenth to be exact. And the seafoam mini stripes is one. So, and then our fresh just so is one and a quarter. So we'll go ahead and cut that one to the right size. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut one and a quarter using my guides. Okay, so now I have my three strips of paper that are going to go horizontal on my card. So those three. I already have my... Okay, we will just cut out a new one. That will be easy enough. So I have my bon bonjour. Now notice on the bonjour... Oh, by the way, bonjour everybody. Welcome to Paris. I did not leave the white along the outside edge like I typically do. So I just liked how it contrasted with the Eiffel Tower. So you can keep that in mind. Okay, I have my Eiffel Tower here and I've got my bonjour cut out. I've got my paper strips. But if you noticed, I've done a little bit of inking. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. And one of the things I like about the inking is it helps give a little more definition to those pieces. On the pink one, I used the Le Pen. Pretty funny having a straight from Paris, I'm sure. <clears throat> and I actually just did a little outlining, and we're gonna do that a little bit on the inside of our card too. So, I've got some scratch paper here. Camp headquarters are sure busy. I don't know who's calling, but I'm gonna have to call them back, I'm afraid. So, I'm gonna take my paper pieces and I am going to measure, and I'm just gonna leave this like a half an inch and I'm gonna go ahead and fold it just close and then I will bring it back so I can get a good nice crease on it. And then, so you can see I just left like a half an inch or so. And then I'm going to trim the back so it is flush with my card. And the reason I wanna do that now is I'm going to I want to ink all of my edges. So I'm going to hurry and get my little stripe. Thinking and keeping this as an idea for a man, I tried to do it so the pink wasn't on the front. And I just wrap that as well. Trim off the little piece. And this one goes, it leaves about an inch and a quarter. 
let's measure just to make sure oh an inch and a quarter wow so we've got that one cut to size we've got both of those done and now we'll do our last little one and it's like an eighth of an inch from the edge we'll fold it I will trim the back okay so we have all of our strips that we're going to be using and now we're just going to ink the edges or you could use the pen to outline them if you want okay there are a couple of techniques you can use for inking and I also inked the Eiffel Tower so we're going to do that too um, ink we're going to use is pumice stone and what I have found I like to do it a little softer and add more coats than get too much but I've learned too much can be okay too because it's not about being perfect it's just having fun and learning new things so I have our little dauber here and I'm just rubbing it getting some stuff some ink on it and then I test it on my paper just so I know how much is going to come off and now I just simply take and you can see it's just barely getting on the edges here and you could leave it down too sometimes I tend to pick things up we're just going to get these edges quick so you can see how it's just giving a little bit of definition to that strip and if I want to have a little bit more I can actually pick up my ink pad and just rub it along the edge to see how that is just picking up the very faint edge and I think that is really defining as well I think that's a, a fun technique I'll do it with the Eiffel Tower quickly. Remember, we're having fun doing this. Now, I maybe got a little bit more there than I wanted, so I can either try and blend more in. I can use... You know, as things age, they all age differently. So they don't have to all look the same. I'm just going to try and even it out just a little bit. Maybe it's two opposite corners that have more aging. Okay, so I like how that is filling. Go ahead and put my lid back on my ink. And again, I was using Tim Holtz's Distress Ink. This is our pumice stone color. Okay, we are getting close now that we can actually just start assembling. I liked, oh, wait, we didn't add our ink to this one. So sometimes you could just um, wad up a paper towel and use it like a dauber as well if you don't have um, a dauber. In fact, maybe if you could grab me a paper towel, I will try that quick. It's nice to have people you can just boss around like that. So I've just kind of wrapped it so it's around my finger tight. Get some on my always test. You don't want to get more than you were expecting. And then you can just rub this along your paper, along your paper strip as well. So if you don't have a dauber, this is a nice way to be able to Got a little extra there, but I think it will work out nicely. Um, it's going to actually be on the back, but I really kind of like, wasn't my intention to have as much inking, but I really am liking it. So let's see how it turns out. 
Okay, and then I thought it was really fun to use the happy birthday to you paper um, for the base of our card. So I'll we'll just quickly fold this in half. And then we're going to just follow the example of this one. I'm going to start with the um, boulder stripe our little seafoam mini stripes and if you think oh I want that a little shorter you could just snip it off and it looks like we'll need to trim a little on the back one too but it was up about so so I'm just going to use my double sided tape but you use whatever adhesive you have handy So we've got our first stripe on, then I'm going to go for our next, our fresh gesso. Oh, that's the back. And it just, I had it so it just overlapped a little bit. Hear that down. And then I used our stripes to kind of go between them. Now I'm just going to use my scissors and trim off those little edges. Let's see how the back looks. Oh, I could straighten this one up a little bit. Make it a little straighter. And this little stripe here just needs a little adjusting. So I think we're pretty good shape. Okay, so we have um, the foundation of our card. We're going to simply add our Eiffel Tower. So if you have been to Paris, which I have a number of years ago, um, we went with our family. Our daughter was two at the time, so I went to Paris as a two-year-old. Um, so I maybe had a different experience, but we did um, go up to the top of the Eiffel Tower and the ride from here to there is crazy because the elevator is very clickety clack and you go on an angle so but it was really fun and then i'm going to add just a simple greeting bonjour which means good day hello and i'm going to use mounting tape because i want it to just stand out a little bit more And you can just position that how you want. But look how quick and easy. And it looks totally different than our pink card. I thought we could hurry and just go ahead and do a little something in the inside of our card too. So I cut out the little fleur de lis. But I cut it a little wider. So let me just hurry and do that. So you can see what I'm referring to. So it's just a little bit thick of a border around because I wanted to have something a little bit bigger on the inside of the card. But it feels a little um, not quite finished because the border is so big. So I'm going to take my lay pen. And you can see these lines are not perfect. So then it's very easy to come in. And if I don't make a perfect line, it's okay. It just will feel like the rest. And it just gives it character and personality. And I really did some, like I went way out there. So sometimes I'll even come back and do a second line.
like so. So very easy and instead of inking my paper pieces I am going to go ahead and ink those as well like I have done on the pink card. And remember I just go a little bit on away from the outside edge and if my lines don't touch exactly that is not the point. It's just a little finishing touch that gives a little definition. And you can see it is not perfect, but when the whole card gets put together, you'll see how cute it all looks. Now, of course, you could use a ruler and make your lines exact, and that would be really nice as well. But I'm not one to take, I don't have the patience. I just wanna hurry and do it. And that makes it fun too. That came from my pen lid. So, I thought what would be fun is to put all these little pieces together. Um, and then, I'm just going to staple them. So I've got those three pieces. I kind of wish they had a little bit longer piece for that. I'm gonna switch that one out. Okay, sorry. We'll just hurry and do our little lines. And really, don't be intimidated. You can see that um, my lines aren't perfectly straight. I think that's part of the fun of doodling. So, now I've got my two contrasting. I've got my little floor de lis there. And I'm going to staple these together. And now I can just adhere this inner card. And that way your card is finished on the inside as well. You can write your little message. So I think that turned out so fun, but I can't wait to show you the envelope. They are so cute. I love our new DIY envelopes. The patterns are so cute and they are reversible. So you can make it like this, which coordinates really cute with our card. Let me clear a little space here. Or I could make it like this with the happy birthday inside and it still coordinates really cute with the card and then of course we have our card wrappers or sorry our envelope wraps and so I just did very very simple but you can see the edges just don't quite seem finished so you could have inked the paper before you had hooked it down I am just going to go ahead and do our little lines like we've been doing and I'm not going to go down there because I'm going to wrap it around. And if your lines don't all connect, that is not a problem. It might actually be easier to do this before you put it on the envelope. But look how cute that just finishes off the edges. So thanks for stopping by. It is so fun to have you here at camp. I have had such a great time. And I hope we can all get more sleep now. Or maybe we don't need any more sleep. I think making cards is a lot of fun. I hope you enjoy your day. Oh, don't forget, have you been to your sidewalk cafe yet? One other thing to look forward to this weekend, you should have a movie night. As I was thinking about movies in Paris, I was reminded of Sabrina. And then my husband and I were listening to an audiobook. It is the cutest book. And at the beginning of every chapter, she quotes an Audrey Hepburn movie. And it was just so fun to hear those little quotes from the characters that Audrey played that we decided to watch some of her movies. So the first one we watched was, I would have called it Charade, but I guess in Paris you call it Charade. So it was so cute and just the movie it doesn't go as fast paced as our lives are today, but that was kind of refreshing. The movie was great. Um, so pick a movie set in Paris to finish off our week. Can't wait to see you tomorrow. Happy camping.